Well, coming up on today's show, the Kia Nero is driven and gets a brand new name. Dyson plans for a silent city and the Porsche electric pit stop. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, the 19th of September edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. In case you were wondering, by the way, we've already uh, published a Audi e-tron Quattro special edition of this podcast and it was in the uh, the launch was in the early hours of the morning UK time about 3:30 in the morning UK time when the Audi presentation was going on live streaming online and as much as I love electric cars I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning to watch that so immediately uh, got up watched the live stream uh, got my thoughts together looked at a couple of the first articles online some of the interviews with Audi staff and the president of uh, Audi America for instance just to get there more subtle take on how they're talking about it and then put a podcast out so if you want to hear all about the audi e-tron quattro uh, which is its name by the way marvelous how so many of the mainstream news outlets managed to call it a variety of different names uh, then go and download or listen to if you listen to the podcast on youtube that special edition show thank you to myev.com for helping make the show if you're after a used car rather than a new one and let's face it most of us on the budgets that we work to uh, used is of interest they have built a marketplace so you can buy and sell and learn about your evs uh, if you want to go check out myev.com let's talk about the new kia nero let me give it its new name it appear i can't get any confirmation from kia that there is an official announcement of a new name but simply uh, an official press release from the kia newsroom that calls it this name So I presume it is a new name. It's called the E-Nero. Up until now, we've been calling it the the two models that are very similar, Hyundai Kona EV and the Kia Nero Electric. And it was a bit weird why the Hyundai was the EV and the Kia Nero was electric. And sometimes they were calling it the Nero EV. Anyway, this new press release calls it the new Kia E-Nero. So let's use that name until I can get confirmation from somewhere that this is officially the new name for it. Because even on the Kia website at the moment a lot of the imagery still says Kia Electric so I I presume this isn't a mistake they're too big to make these kind of mistakes so this looks like the announcement of a new name what car got to drive in it they say the official 301 miles of the e-nero can do that can do between charges is one of the most impressive figures yet not only that but the Hyundai Kona which the e-nero shares components with uh, is uh, up there with the more expensive premium badge models the new name E Nero seems to be going down very well uh, with the people that I, when I tweeted about it earlier, people going, oh, I like that. It's a good name. Well, the E Nero is a very quick car, says what car? Shockingly so. The first time you put your foot down, you're taken back with just how urgent it feels and delivering its power more like a sports car than a hybrid, uh, than the Nero hybrid, they say. Another experience familiar from that car is the steering wheel paddles, so you can control the regen. Four settings on this, everything from freewheeling to one-pedal driving. Uh, freewheeling, I just say like cruising or coasting. And although the system on our test car, say what car, had a habit of resetting itself back to the auto mode where it decides the level for you. Meanwhile, auto car, say look for a bit of extra poke to make a pass on the motor away and it's all there before your right foot has barely touched the pedal we even managed to spin the wheels accelerating accelerating out of a 30 mile an hour zone onto a main a road in the uk we're looking at early 2019 deliveries for this the kia official website says 2018 on sale but i imagine that'll be probably very very late in 2018 base model starting just under thirty thousand pounds the official kia Press Hub has now been updated, and it says this, the new Kia e-Nero, there's that name again, the e-Nero provides driving range of 485 kilometres on a single charge from the 64 kilowatt hour lithium polymer battery. It can do 615 kilometres homologated range for city driving. 312 kilometre combined cycle range on the smaller 39.2 39.2 kilowatt hour pack zero emissions crossover combines electric power with space and practicality innovative technologies to harvest and conserve electric energy and so far 200,000 of the nero models have been sold globally in the last two years 65 of them 65,000 of them in europe it's going to make a paris motor show debut in the next couple of weeks on sale across europe by the end of 2018 
Well, that range they were talking about, a real-world range of 310 miles. If you do a bit of town and city driving, and a bit of motorway driving, and A-road driving, uh, that matches Bjorn Nellen's test. He did a YouTube test of this, about 25 minutes long. He did a 56-mile-an-hour test in Korea, and he got 500 kilometres, or 310 miles, with the dash still showing 6.8 miles on that. And that, of course, is bearing in mind that I imagine the engineers have built in some range. So even when it says zero miles left, there probably is a bit more after that as well. And he had some elevation on that trip to contend with as well. So 300 miles, 500 k's, does look like a pretty much a real world range in mixed driving. I'll put links to Watcar and the YouTube video and also the Bjorn did and also the press center from Kia. I'll put that online for you to have a look at yourself. Now, Next on the podcast, you know that I'm really impressed with James Dyson, and he's been telling about his plans for a silent city. The Evening Standard newspaper has published an interview with James Dyson. Dyson's electric car project fascinates me for several reasons. Firstly, it's the opposite of Tesla. They have a figurehead who isn't on Twitter 15 times a day. They're spending a bucket load of private money, an individual's money. It's his company, and he has a track record of innovation and then being able to commercialise ideas into very strong profits. Well, Julian Glover, for the standard, has been to Dyson HQ here in the UK. And at the middle of it all sits an engaging Englishman, says the article, in thick-rimmed round glasses, the son of a teacher from Norfolk. He's turned what was a start-up in 1993 into a global business. Nobody mentioned vacuum cleaners because it's so much more than that. According to the Sunday Times' rich list, James Dyson is now worth £10 billion. When you enter Dyson HQ, the iPhones in your pocket are wrapped in plastic at the door to block their cameras. You can look in through some glass windows at rows of desks at the front of long, flowing steel buildings. But behind them are bigger, more private areas where the company is developing what it expects to be the most remarkable product yet, their electric car. James Dyson had a lot of interesting things to say about this article. I'll put a full link in the show notes, but some some select quotes that I'll bring you. He said this, and I quote, If you're trying to do something radical and different, it's quite a good idea not to have experience, but to be naive and inquisitive. I hope to do it very differently to Tesla on all sorts of levels. My approach is the technology approach. I'm risking my own money, not shareholders' money which is very, very different. We know what we have to do. We're developing a new type of battery. It's safer, it's quicker to charge and able to power vehicles for longer. It's literally a solid, end quote. Well, struck with how hard it is to find good engineering graduates in this country, he solved that problem by launching his own university. The second intake, which is 40% female against an average of other other universities of around 14, 14% for engineering, uh, has just arrived at the site for a four-year university course. New pods to house them are being built. A clubhouse is going up. There's a gym. And it's not a typical student experience. They work for us for three days, have two academic work days, and then work over the weekends. It's a tough course, he says. They come here because they want to do real live things and are taught by real live engineers. We pay them. So the nice thing is they aren't having to borrow money and there are no fees. Uh, Elsewhere, undergraduates get a terribly raw deal, in my view, says James Dyson. We have to borrow all of this money, uh, only taught for half of the year. So solving his own problems there, couldn't find enough young people to work for his company, launched a university, and he's got people feeding right into Dyson, making their electric car. 2020 or 2021 are the dates that are being thrown around at the moment, and there's previous articles on... This, if you want to go and see what bits of the market they're entering, it is fascinating what James Dyson is doing because, as he says, he thinks it's better to be naive and inquisitive and not be one of the incumbent automakers, but approach this with fresh thinking. He's not, for instance, having these automotive consultants that do the rounds coming into Dyson to tell them what to do. They're working it out themselves, and that is going to have some really interesting consequences. Watch this space. Well, a new report released last week by the environmental group Two Degrees Institute shows that Canadians can save between 66 and 77% of fuel and operating costs by driving battery electric cars, according to an article I found on the Canadian version of Huffington Post earlier today. It also found that since electric cars have fewer moving parts, 
surprise, surprise, uh, they're less scheduled and virtually no routine maintenance. Service costs are lower, says this article. Surprise, surprise. Depending on the province, it can range from 23000 to 36000 Canadian dollars over 10 years, over the lifetime of about 250,000 kilometres driven, that you will make a saving. Who knew electric cars are cheaper to own over the long range? There's nothing to go wrong in them. <laughs> That's news to you and I. Right, moving on. Sorry, I'm a bit cynical mode is turned on today. Right, moving on to Porsche and the Porsche electric Pit stop. I love that phrase. It's a charging system. It's built of modular blocks that can be built to adapt to the existing infrastructure and space constraints and how many cars that might be expected to deal with each charging station, says Slash Gear. Now, the current system, Porsche argues, of charging stations is awkward, uh, both aesthetically and in terms of engineering, because every fast charging cabinet has all of the bits inside it for charging. The transformer, uh, galvanic isolation, power electronics, cooling, connectivity. It's bulky. They're expensive. Porsche want to do it differently. They're going to split the charges out into their component parts and make them modular. And that means you can scale them much quicker. For smaller locations, there are systems too. The combo box from Porsche uh, combines both power box and cooling box functionality in one. And the charge box, meanwhile, works around the limitations of the grid with a buffer storage battery that can supplement the regular supply. Porsche has two models, one with a 70 kilowatt hour battery and a 160 kilowatt charging station. The other one is a 140 kilowatt hour battery and two 160 kilowatt charging stations combined for 320 kilowatts. So we know it's no secret that Porsche are very proud of their 800 volt system charging on 350 kilowatt chargers. They're talking about just pulling in, plugging in for 10 minutes, grabbing a coffee at the services and getting another few hundred miles of range out of your car and off you go again. Literally the time it would take you to pull up to the petrol pump, take off the flap, undo the thing, take your card out and pay and uh, put the card in, put your PIN number in often and then put the pump in, start pumping diesel and, and, and petrol or maybe if you don't do that then you're going to walk to the kiosk and pay and queue up. Charging your electric car is quicker than running on fossils with these new Porsche systems. However, can you imagine a 300 kilowatt charging station, two or three of those, and all of a sudden, uh, all cars turn up at the same time. It's a huge draw on the grid. So what they're doing with battery storage, so the batteries get trickle charged by the grid. You haven't got to put a massively expensive new grid connection in, and then those batteries charge the cars at a very high speed. It's really innovative, and they're the first ones doing it now. Tesla have talked about it, uh, talking about their version 3 superchargers announced by the end of the year is the latest information from Elon. Porsche seem to be the first ones actually implementing it, and I think they should get a bit of kudos for doing this as well, and props to them. Well, I mentioned Tesla, and two more stories today. Uh, Tesla has no credible competition, according to a, an analyst's report, and when it does have credible competition, it will be able to hold its own. Analysts at Bernstein announced in a note earlier today, and all the hand-wringing about potential rivals for its electric car glosses over Tesla's greatest long-term competitive advantage an unparalleled brand, says Claudia Assis for Market Watch. Uh, but let's make this clear, there's no actual flood from the competition coming, says the analyst uh, Tony uh, Sakanagi. He says, we tallied up every announced EV coming to the US for the next four years. The results are stark. Moreover, incumbent auto automakers, uh, all they're really doing with their announcements and their cars, we've talked about Audi e-tron Quattro and Mercedes EQC, Jaguar I-Pace and more. Moreover, they say, the incumbents validate and expand the existing market for electric cars rather than cannibalizing Tesla and hampering them with their own EV launches. I'll put a full link to that article if you'd like to read analyst stuff in the show notes. And finally, this is a nice story. For anyone that likes a Mackie D's, when you just got to have your 20 nugs and a chocolate shake but you've got to charge your car at the same time. McDonald's have announced a partnership with the Dutch company Nuon to put EV charging stations into all of their drive-ins in the Netherlands. According to Climate Action, the agreement set to start at the end of the year, installing 168 charging stations at every Mackie D's in the Netherlands with a McDrive. They aim to charge an EV in half an hour with green electricity 
purely from the Dutch windmills. Well, Bas Klaassen is the Director of Development, uh, Real Estate and Construction at McDonald's. He said this, and I quote, With this agreement, together with Nuon, we're taking an important step in addition to our objectives to making our restaurants sustainable. Electric riders can get back on the road within half an hour and have time for a good cup of coffee. End quote. I mean, look, the coffee in McDonald's is pretty good these days, but I go back to the 20 nugs and chocolate milkshake, my friend. So you can even charge up at a McDonald's. Well, thank you very much for listening today. Do you fancy answering this week's question of the week supplied by myev.com? How was your buying experience? We want to hear from you. If you own an EV, how did you buy it? Was it a dealer? Did you haggle on price? Are you leasing it? Uh, Was it used or new? What are your successes and fails? Tell me your stories in the comments or email hello at evnewsdaily.com. There's a feedback form on the website too. A heartfelt thank you to the 81 patrons. Another one, thank you, the 81 patrons of this podcast uh, that very kindly put this uh, show on the air every day to spread the word to literally thousands of people now around the world and help educate them about EVs. There are 239 previous episodes of this podcast online to listen to for free in the places that you normally get your podcasts. And you can find me online by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.